This talk I'll present our recent results on magnetic field decay in neutron stars. I'll start with some introduction, then remind our previous results on the subject, and finally present our recent results which I just submitted. From observations we know that uh, there is a big diversity of young neutron stars of different kinds from standard radio pulsars, which are most numerous among known objects, and uh, up to magnetars, antimagnetars, and other types of neutron stars, which are less numerous in terms of known sources. However, if we calculate their birth rate, uh, we see that objects like central compact objects or magnetars or the Magnificent 7 contribute a lot to the uh, total budget of neutron star formation rate. The origin of this diversity of observational appearance and physical properties of young neutron stars is not completely understood and the goal is to make a so-called model of grand unification for neutron stars to explain this diversity in the same framework. Many attempts have been made uh, during last, say, 10 years, and uh, probably the main ingredients of uh, these unified models are related to magnetic fields of neutron stars. So we can discuss field decay, emerging magnetic field and um, diversity of magnetic field topology. So all these subjects are actively studied now and there are lots of new observations, lots of new theoretical approaches, theoretical models. Here we'll speak uh, mostly about magnetic field decay. If the magnetic field is constant, then in the PP dot diagram, a neutron star evolves along such a track shown with the straight lines. Uh, and probably as, the, as a zero approximation, it works for standard radio pulsars with fields around 10 to 12 Gauss. However, obviously it is not working for magnetars and then tracks might be much different. So we start with large fields, large um, spin down rates, and uh, then rapidly in say less than 10 to five years, these fields decay significantly. We see different astrophysical manifestations of magnetars related to the dissipation of energy of their magnetic fields. And uh, we don't know well what happens when uh, magnetic field of such neutron stars decays down, say, to 10 to 13 Gauss, maybe if it continues to decay or uh, the decay saturates um, around this value, around 10 to 13 Gauss, at least by an order of magnitude. Maybe this uh, rapid decay saturates because of the stage of so-called hole attractor, which was um, recently, um, say five years ago, proposed by Gorgliatas and Cumming. And um, the, uh, from the observational point of view, uh, there are different indirect indications that this stage is necessary. Uh, however, there are no direct proofs that this stage is there. Uh, still, this is a very tempting idea that after several uh, whole time scales, um, very rapid um, reconfiguration of magnetic field in the crust of neutron stars uh, stops, uh, the field reaches um, some equilibrium state, and this significantly slows down the magnetic field decay. Um, there are many approaches uh, to estimate characteristic time scales of the magnetic field evolution and we can uh, discuss three main processes. The whole cascade, uh, this, is, um, this process uh, is not a dissipative one, so uh, we are dealing just with reconfiguration of the magnetic field, but what is important is that um, 
the topology of magnetic field evolves in such a way that the characteristic times, uh, the characteristic scale, uh, spatial scale will become smaller. And as you see, the ohmic dissipation time scale is proportional uh, to this uh, spatial scale um, in the power two. And so if we uh, have um, smaller um, loops, say, of uh, the magnetic field, then the dissipation uh, produces much faster. And so the whole cascade is important in this sense, that there might be some very rapid uh, process of um, real dissipation, some ohmic process, but uh, it's necessary to uh, drive uh, the characteristic time, uh, the characteristic scale of the magnetic field uh, down to smaller values. Um, as for the uh, ohmic processes, uh, we can mm, divide it in two parts. In uh, one, we have uh, scattering uh, of electrons of um, phonons in the um, in the crust and uh, uh, the second uh, pro uh, process is related to scattering of electrons on, on crystal impurities in the crust so for brevity i'll call them um, phonons and impurities to distinguish between them um, the um, the scale of um, magnetic field decay due to impurities is related just to properties of the crust and it's typically parametrized by, uh, with this parameter Q. And, um, and decay due to phonons is temperature dependent. And, uh, and you see here temperature in the denominator. And uh, thus it is more important for young hot neutron stars and less important uh, for major neutron stars when they cool down. All this um, approach uh, is mm, carefully and very well described in the paper by Cumming and uh, his, <coughs> his collaborators 2004. So, uh, what about uh, observations? In principle, if we analyze the whole population of radio pulsars, uh, it seems that it is not necessary to introduce um, magnetic field decay, which operates um, in exponential manner with the same time scale uh, during the whole radio pulse revolution. Of course, if you add this option, all fits becomes better in population synthesis, but in principle, there are several papers in which, um, especially for normal radio pulsars, this is not necessary. However, uh, there are indications that there are episodes in the lifetime of radio pulsars, especially when they are relatively young, when uh, significant uh, field decay is probably visible. So we started it um, six years ago in this paper, and uh, we started neutron stars with ages, say, from roughly 10 to 5 up to 10 to 6 years. We uh, analyzed uh, two big sets of data and uh, we found that uh, in this interval of real ages um, the magnetic field decays by a factor of roughly two and the characteristic time scale is about uh, 400 kilo years. However, it is impossible to continue with the same rate of magnetic field decay further because then we'll come to contradiction with the observational data. Uh, magnetic field decay is too fast. So uh, we have to make a physical model in which, on one hand, we have relatively rapid field decay for normal radio pulsars during this period of time, but then we have to switch off this rapid decay. And uh, so our next step was to form such a model uh, we have to model whole, dissipa uh, whole process um, ohmic dissipation due to impurities and phonons. And the last one is temperature dependent. So we took uh, calculations of neutron stars cooling made by Peter Sternin and his collaborators in St. Petersburg. Uh, we made uh, analytical fits 
for uh, this temperature. I have to underline that here we're dealing not with the surface temperature, but uh, in the temperature in the crust, say in, in, with the temperature below the um, heat blanket in the outer layers of neutron stars. So typical values are 10 to 8 Kelvin, which roughly corresponds to surface temperature about 10 to 6 Kelvin. Um, so we uh, made several tries. Uh, including all three types of um, magnetic field evolution, whole phonons and impurities, and then switching them off one by one or modifying them. Of course, you cannot uh, completely switch off impurities, but you can modify pr the parameter Q. Um, we used the differential equation proposed by uh, Gulera, Pons and collaborators in 2008 uh, to calculate this evolution. And uh, what we obtained is visible here, and um, I presented these results uh, five years ago in uh, one of the previous conferences of this cycle. And uh, we see that at some moment we switch off, we switch off uh, the whole process um, because of the whole attractor. And uh, we actually, in this model, we switched off um, field dissipation due to um, electron scattering of the phonons. And uh, this corresponds to this time scale. So you hear this, uh, this feature in the red curve, for example, it's more visible. And um, these clear features uh, after which we have only field decay due to impurities. Uh, so we can fit parameters to explain findings uh, we got from the data, we can fit uh, to explain it either with uh, phonons or with whole cascade. So both are possible, maybe both of them contribute. And uh, this is the equation for field evolution. Uh, this is the analytical solution again from Aguilera and collaborators. And we uh, tried to go a little bit deeper, um, trying to distinguish between um, whole um, process and um, phonons. So uh, our method is sensitive to ages uh, about several hundred kilo years here. And uh, that's uh, the moment at which the critical temperature at which we switched phonons is reached. So here it's clearly visible. So uh, if we use such an approach, we came to the conclusion that it is easier to switch off uh, the, magnet the rapid magnetic field decay in proper time if um, we are dealing mainly with phonons. So whole process probably uh, is less important in uh, young normal radio pulsars. However, now we can make a step further and that's what I want to present uh, in the third final part of my talk. Uh, recently, uh, a big group of authors presented a very detailed pulsar timing of a big sample, uh, close to 100 pulsars, and for many of them breaking indices are measured. And uh, we analyzed different approaches to explain um, the data these authors obtained. And these are their results. So I remind what is the breaking index, it's a combination of um, the first and second period of frequency derivative. Uh, we are working in a relatively simple approach with a slightly modified classical magnetodipole formula. And in this plot, mm, uh, you see uh, in red measured values of the breaking index and in blue upper limits. So we are dealing only with this part, with these uh, red symbols. I have to Note that uh, already in these papers, the authors discussed, of course, some possibilities to explain uh, this breaking index is significantly different from the classical value three. So from classical magnetic dipole formula, we get uh, three. And uh, here, typical values are uh, several tens, uh, which is a little bit puzzling. Um, so let me show in the PP dot diagram uh, how a neutron star um, evolves with different breaking indices. Uh, this is from the paper uh, with, uh, with the data and here just a nice plot uh, from another paper by um, different authors uh, which clearly shows the direction of evolution for different breaking indices. 
and this uh, blue lines corresponds to n equal 3. So if we have uh, n larger than 3, this can be an indication of a decay magnetic field. Of course, other processes also can be in work, uh, also unrelated to a neutron star itself. For example, it can be a member of a binary, so orbital motion can contribute to timing, and if you don't take it properly into account, and you have a, say, fake uh, value of the breaking index. We also discuss uh, these options and come to the conclusion that the magnetic field decay is the best option. And now I present this result. So we um, advanced, we upgraded our model of magnetic field decay. Again, we include um, the whole process, whole cascade, uh, whole attractor, um, ohmic dissipation due to phonons and due to impurities. And we uh, calculate this field evolution for different masses of neutron stars because thermal evolution depends on the neutron star mass. So for the time scale of magnetic field decay due to phonons, we use this approximation. Uh, it depends on the temperature, so we take cooling curves. And uh, there is a constant uh, related to internal properties, which corresponds to the, say, initial time scale of um, decay due to phonons. And um, if we take a typical mass of a neutron star, you see on the left plot the magnetic field evolution and on the right the evolution of the breaking index depending on the characteristic age. Here we plot n and characteristic age because both are measured properties. This on, uh, on the left uh, we plot say physical properties and on the right uh, measured properties. And uh, you see that in principle you can fit uh, large breaking indices um, with uh, these parameters. However, you can do even better if you take lighter neutron stars. Obviously, if a neutron star is lighter, then in the most of scenarios, its internal temperature is um, higher. Uh, so uh, higher temperature, smaller is the time scale for the magnetic field decay due to phonons. Uh, if you have larger uh, you have more intensive magnetic field decay. If you have smaller time scale, then you have uh, larger breaking indices. And this is shown in the right uh, panel of this plot. Uh, now you see that uh, we can easily fit with realistic parameters these large breaking indices up to 100. Uh, if we take neutron stars with masses, say 1.1, we have to underline here that uh, this value of mass which fits uh, the observational data significantly depends on the equation of state on the exact cooling curves and of course for a different model uh, it might be different so in principle it is possible to look for a model of thermal evolution which can allow to fit this data not with 1.1 but say with 1.2 or maybe even with large neutron star masses so um, there is a room for more refined fitting but it's not the scope of this uh, of this um, work which I'm presenting because our idea was to demonstrate that the mm, magnetic field decay due to phonons for realistic parameters can explain also this recent data on large breaking indices of um, many radio pulsars, many young radio pulsars. So here I come to my conclusions. Uh, so we used um, advanced version of our model of uh, magnetic field decay uh, to uh, analyze recent data uh, presented early this year um, on radio pulsar timing on breaking indices of these objects and we demonstrate that magnetic field decay uh, due to phonons um, can nicely explain this data for realistic parameters. Thank you.